Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Elizabeth Davenport, Dean of Rockefeller Chapel, and it's my very great joy to welcome you to the fourth annual Garish Organ Performance Series recital. Some of you will have heard Chris Houlihan last year when he was with us for the Vienne symphonies, the six Vienne symphonies over two nights, but in six different cities. It was a wonderful, wonderful performance, and we knew at the time that we wanted to invite him back as soon as we possibly could, and so he's here with us today. This Gerish series, as it briefly notes in your program, is named in honor of Professor Brian Gerish, who for many years was a professor at the Divinity School. He lives now on the East Coast in retirement, where he's still doing work on dogmatics. And one of his former students, Steve, who is with us today, gave a gift in honor of his professor. A wonderful thing, having been taught by somebody whose, whose work was so life-transforming that you wanted to do something in his name and in his honor. So we're deeply grateful to Steve for this gift, which enables us to put on a wonderful event each year, gathering of people together to explore music in all of its life-givingness, just as dogmatics uh, was, was a good thing um, in one student life. So warmest thanks for that. And it's lovely to see all of you here today. I hope that you will thoroughly enjoy this afternoon's recital. I'm not going to say any more about Chris's program because he will speak to it himself. The details are in your program. And I would like you to give a very warm welcome to Chris Houlihan.
thank you very much. It's a great treat to be here with you today and to have the opportunity to, to make music here again in this wonderful chapel and, and with all of you. It's a great, it's a great privilege. And, uh, and a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here and watching online, which includes my mother, I think. Um, thank you. Uh, I'd like to continue with uh, a transcription for organ, a piece originally written to be played by a string quartet by Debussy. I love the music of Debussy, and I'm always very saddened by the fact that he chose not to write any music specifically for the pipe organ. Uh, we know he admired a few movements of one of Louis V. Aaron's symphonies, in fact. And uh, I think this, this slow movement from his string quartet works particularly well on the organ, especially an organ like this, which it's with its multitude of, of luscious string sounds. Uh, I think you'll, you'll find, though, that uh, with the organ, as Debussy orchestrated some of his piano works and vice versa, we have a, a whole palette of colors and we can really orchestrate this string quartet to include clarinet solos and oboe solos. And it will begin with the beautiful French horn stop of the organ. This is uh, one of my favorite pieces to play. I think it just will relax us all a bit after that, uh, that wild Bach we just had. Here we go. Thank you. 
Maurice Duraflay was a fellow French composer of Debussy's who wrote very little music throughout his lifeline, lifetime. He was very, very picky about uh, what, what he published. Uh, this prelude and fugue on the name of Alain is based off of the musical equivalent of the letters in Jean Alain's last name, A-L-A-I-N. Uh, Duraflay literally takes those notes in a musical uh, notation. You know, we have the notes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, but uh, if you continue the alphabet, you get the rest of the, the letters, you know, if you continue up the keyboard. Well, anyway, Duraflay takes those notes and build, builds this most fantasy uh, based off of it. The prelude begins with a lot of uh, repeated notes, very fast moving figures accompanied by, by soft string sounds in the left hand. And every now and then we get these sort of piercing sounds from the cornet or, or the trumpet of the organ uh, reminding us of something, I think. Alain was a, a, another composer, a friend of Duraflay's, who was killed fighting uh, during World War II. And he had a very, very tragic death, but, but was a hero. And uh, he wrote very, very, very colorful and, and, and unique music for the organ. And his, his death was a great loss to the history of organ music. And uh, I think uh, Duraflay wanted to honor his memory by writing this, this piece. The end of the, the prelude begins, uh, we have a solo on the corno di bassetto. Everything sort of all of a sudden calms down. We hear a theme from one of Alain's pieces, the litanies, and then Duraflay brings us into the fugue, also based on A-L-A-I-N. And it builds and builds to a very exciting conclusion.
that piece is so much fun to play. I can always hardly resist starting a, a second half with it. I think it, I hope it puts everyone in a good mood. <clears throat> I'd like to play a, a fantasy by Franz Liszt. It's based on a theme, ad nos ad salutarum undum. I think in some ways it's a little bit misleading. It sounds like this might be a piece based off of a Gregorian chant theme or a hymn tune, but in fact, Liszt took this theme from an opera, the opera Le Prophète by Meyerbeer. And the idea of writing a fantasy piece based off of a, an opera tune, which was, you know, in a way, the, the popular tunes of the day, uh, was, was, was very common. Composers would write these, these sort of fluff show pieces uh, based on tunes that people knew to, to entertain crowds with. But here, Liszt uh, takes this theme and really uh, writes an operatic scaled piece of his own. Uh, this is, is not uh, pure fluff. We often think of Liszt as the flamboyant piano virtuoso, and of course he was. He dazzled audiences, and uh, women swooned over him. He was a rock star. But he, uh, as he aged, he got more and more serious. And uh, at one point, he turned to uh, the organ and the music of Bach. And, and the organ is, of course, Bach's instrument. And he wrote this handful of, 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 uh, of pieces. This, uh, this one in particular is, is my favorite to play. Uh, you'll, you'll see the first half of the fantasy, we only hear snippets of the theme. He sort of is just snatching at it. Uh, it begins very tormented and then immediately contrasts with this few minutes of very almost angelic music. And that becomes the sort of the MO for this piece, this epic battle between uh, good and evil, this very romantic idea. Um, so the, the fantasy continues and continues and gets more and more fiery, and all of a sudden he calms down. And the second half of uh, the fantasy, he, he shifts from C minor to the ethereal key of F sharp major and gives us these very... Uh, uh, otherworldly variations on the theme. Uh, we'll f we first hear the theme in its, in its entirety in a major key, played in a very, very quiet stop of the organ. He goes through these variations and then uh, gives us the fugue, which of course is uh, back to being diabolical and fiery. In the end, I think uh, you'll see which of good and evil wins out. Uh, it's, it's an epic piece, like I said, operatic in scale, so sit tight, and uh, I, I really hope you'll enjoy it. I, I really love getting to share this piece with an audience. Again, it's uh, such a treat to be here uh, on Mother's Day in, in this beautiful chapel on this magnificent organ. Uh, I was so, so thrilled to be invited to return here to Rockefeller. Played the six Vieren symphonies last summer here. That was a great, great experience, and just so happy to be back. Uh, here we go, the list, fantasy, and fugue on Adnos.
I thought since the last time I was here, I played the Vierne symphonies as an encore, it might be a good idea to do that again. Is that, <laughs> would, maybe, maybe, just, uh, maybe just one movement from, from the Vierne symphonies. Thank you. 